Hi everyone, hope that you're having a great week. So today we'll be working on a solution for problem set 2, which is bulbs. So this is a new problem set that was added to the CS50 course as of 2023. So in this problem set, we'll be prompting the user for a message, and our program will print out the message in binary using light bulbs. So let's start from the top. So computers use binary when numbers can only be 0 or 1. Hence, writing 1, 2, 3 would be a mistake because binary numbers can only have zeros and ones. So that is, there are only two possible numbers. So in the CS50 problem set to brief, they have actually more details about understanding bases and how binary is represented. So do take some time to read through that. With the background of binary in place, let's move on to what we need to work on. So light bulbs represent two possible states. Either the bulb is switched on or off. So similar to how binary numbers can only be either 0 or 1. So in this problem set, we want to encode text as a sequence of binary numbers and convert this into a set of bobs. Taking the example of the text that we get as hi with an exclamation mark, we need to turn each character into ASCII values, that is, decimal numbers, and then we will convert the decimal numbers into their respective binary numbers, which use only zeros and ones where we will assume that each decimal is represented by 8 bits as such. Next, we will interpret these binary numbers as instructions for light bulbs on a stage, where 0 means the light bulb is off, and 1 means that the light bulb is on. So what do we need to do? So first, we need to implement a program in a file called bulbs. Then, we will prompt the user for a message using getString, and the program will then convert the string into a series of 8-bit binary numbers where we have one for every character in the string. Then we will use the print bulb function to print a series of zeros and ones as a series of yellow and black emoji, which will represent bulbs that are switched on and off respectively. So for output, we want each byte of eight symbols to be printed on its own line. So your program should print out the series of bulbs with one line of eight bulbs for every character in the string. So let's focus on how to convert the string into a series of eight bit binary numbers. Starting with an example, how would we convert the number 4 into binary? So the number 4 in binary is actually represented as such, and we need to convert this number 4 into this series of zeros and ones. So the brief actually tells us how to do this, and that is we need to keep dividing the number by 2. So let's work on the number 4, and let's see what this looks like. So for starters, we will take 4 divided by 2, where the quotient is 2 and the remainder is 0. This zero then gets parked in the last value of the binary as such. And moving on, we take the quotient of two, divide by two again, where the quotient is one and the remainder is zero. This zero value goes into the next value of the binary array as such. And moving on, we take the quotient of one, divide it by two again, and this gives us a new quotient of zero and the remainder is one, which goes into the binary as well. So as the quotient is zero, we cannot divide this number further. As we are working with 8 bits, this means we will need to fill in the rest of the binary values as 0. So this is how you get the binary value of the number 4. So essentially, we can actually use the modulo operator to return the remainder value until we get our binary. Now that we understand the principle as to how do you convert an ASCII value into binary, let's do this again, but this time, let's apply the modulo operator. So how will you convert the number 77 into binary? where 77 is actually the ASCII value of the letter M. So for reference, this is the ASCII value of M that we need to obtain. So starting with 77, we take 77 modulo 2, where the quotient is 38 and the output is 1. And this goes into the last value of the binary as seen here. And moving on, we take 38 modulo 2, quotient is 19 and the output is 0, which goes into the binary array here. And next, 19 modulo 2 will give you 1, and this goes into the binary array here followed by 9 modulo 2 giving you 1, 4 modulo 2 giving you 0, 2 modulo 2 giving you 0, and lastly, 1 modulo 2 gives you 1. And since you are working with 8 bits, and the first digit is 0, and that is how you get a binary value of 77. So if you followed this video so far and find the explanations to be helpful, do remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more problem set solutions for the rest of the CS50 program, and you can follow along those for the solutions as well. And it also greatly helps the channel whenever someone likes the video and subscribes to the channel. I really appreciate it and thank you so much. So now that we understand how to convert the text to binary, let's go through the distribution code that we are given. So starting with this, we are declaring that we have a variable called bits invite, which equals to 8. 
This is because we are working with 8-bit binary numbers, and we will make reference to this later. Next, we will declare a function called printBulb. So later on, when we have our binary value, for example, a value of 0, we will apply the function printBulb as such to it. So in this distribution code, it states that printBulb int bit. So what does this mean? So int bit actually tells you the nature of the input that you are applying this function to. So in this case, we are telling the system that when we call the printBulb function later, we will be passing an integer into this function, and this integer will be called bit, and you will see this in action later. Next, this is the main function that we need to write, where we need to prompt the user for a message, convert each character in the message into the corresponding ASCII value, convert this ASCII value into binary, and finally, print this into bulbs. So the number 1 will be represented by a bulb that is on, and number 0 will be represented by a bulb that is off. Moving on, we have this function called printBulb that was written for us already. And once we get our binary number, we will actually print a bulb that is on or off for every single value of the binary that we have. So what do we need to do? We need to first ask the user for a message using getString. So this is quite straightforward, so we can just put it in straight, where we declare a string called message equals getStringMessage, where we prompt the user to key in for their input. Next, we need to convert this string into a series of 8 bits binary numbers, one for each character of the string. So let's dive right into this. So how do we convert a message? In this case, let's use the word hi with an exclamation mark into binary. So there are actually three steps that we need to take to get to this. So first, we need to convert the text into its ASCII value. Then we need to convert the ASCII value into binary. And then we will print the binary into bulbs. So let's start with the first step. That is, to convert the text into ASCII. When we receive our message, it is in the form of a string. For us to convert this into ASCII, we need to run through each character and convert each character into the corresponding ASCII value. So let's do this sequentially, starting with the first letter, which is H. So first, we run through each character of our message. And to do so, we will use the for loop. This is because we will be performing an action for every character of the string. So this will be for int i equals to 0, where n equals to the length of our string, and this is represented by stir length message, where we will repeat this loop as long as i is less than n. Okay, and every time we complete the loop, we will increase i by 1 to move on to the next character and we'll repeat the functions within. Okay, so starting from the top, when i equals to 0, on the message hi, we will obtain the letter h. So next, we need to convert this into the ASCII value. And to convert a character into ASCII, we just need to declare it as an integer as such. So we have int decimal equals to message i, where we declare a new variable called decimal, and this will hold the ASCII value of the character that we are currently working on. So in this example, when i equals to 0, basically we are saying int decimal equals to message 0, which gives you the ASCII value of the first character of our message, that is h and that would be equals to 72. Next, we will convert the ASCII value into binary. So how do we actually convert this value into an 8-bit binary number? So since we need to work out the binary value, we will first declare an array called binary, where the values of all 8 will be 0 for now. So to convert this into binary, recall that we will use the modulo operator to get the remainder value until we get our full binary value. As we get the output from the application of each modulo operator, we will pack it into our binary array. So as we convert the ASCII value of h, which is 72, into binary, we will fill in our binary array starting from where j equals to 0, because we'll fill it in from left to right. So let's apply a modulo operator on 72 to see how that goes. So 72 modulo 2 will give a result of 0. So this goes into our binary array where j equals to 0 as such. Next, taking the quotient of 36 modulo 2, we get 0, which goes into the binary array where j equals to 1 as such. So moving on, 18 modulo 2 gives us the quotient of 9 and the output of 0. It moves into the array where j equals to 2. And then next, 9 modulo 2 gives you a quotient of 4 and the output of 1. So this goes into the array where j equals to 3. And moving on, 4 modulo 2 gives you 0, and that goes into the binary array where j equals to 4. And then 2 modulo 2 gives you 0, it moves into the array. 
And lastly, one modulo 2 gives you the output of 1. So that goes into the array where j equals to 6. So remember that we are working with an 8-bit array. So any values that we did not fill up will remain as 0. So how do we write this into code? So while decimal is greater than 0, which means that we are still able to divide the number by 2, right? the value in the binary array will equal to the decimal modulo 2. Then, we'll take decimal to divide by 2 to get the quotient that we will work on for the next round that we are looping through. Once this is done, we will increase j by 1 to move on to the next row to apply the modulo operator to. So this will keep looping until our decimal value equals to 0, as this means we cannot divide the number any further by 2. However, Notice that what we have just worked out is different from the actual binary value of h. That is, what we have actually worked out is the reverse of the binary of h. This is because when we were filling in the binary array, we actually filled it up from left to right. So what's the implications of this? So this will actually impact the way that we print this binary to bulbs. When we print it out, we actually need to print it from right to left to correct this reversal. So before we move on to that, just a gentle reminder, if you have not liked this video and subscribed to the channel so far, do remember to do so as it greatly helps to bump up my channel to others who might be looking for the walkthrough and some guidance as to how to solve this problem set as well. Now, we are at our last step where we need to print binary to bulbs. So currently, what we have worked out for h is the reverse of the correct binary value for h. So our result is as such, while the correct binary of h is as such. So this means that when we print the array into bulbs, we should print it from right to left instead to get our bulbs printed out in the correct order. So do note that this will actually require us to loop through each digit in this binary array using a for loop. So recall earlier we actually used the for loop a few times already. And as we already used the i and j variables in our earlier loops, we will use k for this round of looping to prevent any confusion. Okay? So how do we print our array from right to left instead? So as we are starting from the back of the array, we need to iterate through our array starting from when k equals to 7. Okay? Recall that previously, we actually declared that we have 8 bits in a byte. So as we iterate through this array, where the first position in the array starts at 0, we will need to indicate the starting point of this loop as k equals to 7 and not 8. So to get that, we will say k equals to bits in byte, which is 8, minus 1. Okay, because this array ends at 7. So the loop looks like this. So for int k equals to bits in byte minus 1, this will be the starting point being k equals to 7. And as long as k is greater or equals to 0, we will continue the loop. As we need the loop to go from k equals to 7, to k equals to 6, then 5, then 4, and so on, we will use k minus minus instead to indicate that we are moving down the array from right to left instead of our usual loops where we always move from left to right. Then we will use the function print bulb and that would be the structure of the code. So what would be the structure of the code that we need to write? So first we will prompt the user for a message and then we will run through each character of the message converting it to ASCII value. And then we will update the binary array each time the modulo operator is applied, starting from the first position. Then we will print the binary to bulbs. So we've already prompted the user for a message. And to run through each character of the message, we will use a for loop to loop through the message as we discussed earlier. Then to convert it to ASCII value with int decimal equals to message. And to convert it into binary, we will first declare our binary array as int binary equals to all values being 0 for now. And starting with the first value of our binary array where it's j equals to 0, and as long as decimal is still greater than 0, we will keep applying our modulo operator. And every time we apply the modulo operator, we will park the result into this binary array. Then, we will divide the decimal by 2 and continue this loop of applying the modulo operator until we cannot further divide the decimal anymore. Lastly, we need to print the binary into bulbs, and to do so, we will use another loop to print the array in reverse. So for int k equals to bits in byte minus 1, as covered earlier, we will then apply the print bulb function. And now, let's put all this in C and test it out. So, 
what we'll do is that I'll indicate this portion to prompt the user for input where we will declare that we have a string called message and we will ask the user for a message to key in. Then after that, I want to iterate through each character in this string that we have just received from the user. So we will do for int i equals to zero and then we will go through the whole length of the message. And then at this part first, I will declare my binary to have all eight values as zero first. Then I will just label this section to convert it into binary. Mm, not so soon. I need to convert it into ASCII value first. So my int decimal will equals to message i. Next, I will then convert this ASCII value into binary. So starting from when j equals to 0 of the binary value. So as long as my decimal is still greater than 0, I will be applying the modulo operator and updating my binary array as I go along. So the binary value will be equals to decimal modulo 2. And then after that, I will divide the decimal by 2. And then after that, I'll continue this loop of applying the modulo operator to what is left until I cannot divide it by 2 anymore. Next, remember that I need to print the binary in reverse. So we will use int k equals to bits in byte minus 1. Right? And remember we are going from right to left now, so we must use k minus minus instead of our usual plus plus. I'll call out the print bot function that was already written for us on this number. And because we want to print each into a new line, I'll put this print uh, slash n here as a line break. So let's uh, make this and see how it goes. We'll print hi. And next we try hi mom. And this is our message. So now let's just run this through check 50 and see how it goes. And yep, there you go. Can you see we are passing through all the different checks that we have? And that would be the solution for week 2 problem set bulbs. Now, if you found this video to be helpful and this helped you arrive at the solution that you're looking for, do remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you at the subsequent videos where I continue to upload the solutions for all the other problem sets for this um, CS50 course. Thank you so much and wishing you a good day ahead. Bye!